Hi, and welcome back to Apple Garage. Uh, so as I mentioned in our dinghy video a while back that I had purchased this motor and it came in with a broken skeg. Uh, actually, what you can see here, this is the broken piece. It mounted like this. But when it was, uh, it was broken during shipment and they dropped it and it punctured the box and broke this off. So our seller actually sent us a new housing. Uh, so we're gonna show you how to pull this foot off and from the looks of it, we'll just be pulling this unit out, the whole piece, so there's two bolts here. So I believe this piece will slide out, then we'll disconnect this housing. And as you can see here on the new one, uh, from the bottom side, it's got a set pin in the front, which is a screw, and you got two pieces here that are mounted here. And then everything should slide out, and we'll be able to pull apart and put this new piece on. And uh, we're going to show you how to do that, and we are going to get started. So, we're going to start with just our 10 millimeter wrench. Just gonna be too big. Get to the bottom Be mindful that this is aluminum, so you don't want to apply excessive force. Otherwise, you may end up either snapping a piece of aluminum or pulling the threads out, and then you're done for. Just one ball. Second ball. Oh, oh. man, I'm really looking great. Uh, you got a little bang. <clears throat> so there is oil in there. There is a little bit of residual oil. I'm going to slide this out once again. A little bit of oil in there. It's actually pretty neat. Uh, looks like there are seals here. There's a rubber seal there and a, ru and a rubber o ring. I'll just sit on this box right here. Make sure nothing falls apart. And there are gears in there. I'm going to keep disassembling this, and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. <coughs> I'm going to need a 13 or something for this one. No, I'm going to need a socket. Alright, so it's because I'm unsure, we're going to try to take these off uh, simultaneously. That's what it's it is. Okay. You can pull that one out. It will probably be more cool. That's a spaceship plate. Okay, there's our other ball. That one there. Uh, Phillips head. I'm not sure of what this piece does. Grab that. All 
Oh, I do believe that is the vent hole where it draws some water. Alright. But we did find another plug here that when removed reveals a bolt with a 10 millimeter head that we are hoping releases the shaft. That's how you pull the lower unit. Um, so we're going to start pulling these bolts off. We're going to show you that. And then um, pull up here where you can see. I don't know if you can quite see down in there. There's a gear we still have to get out. But once we pull this top part off, then we should be able to pull them gears and replace it all into the new housing. Cool. Give me a screwdriver right on there. Okay. Go for it. I really don't want to remove this clip. So, tighten it back down. Tighten it back down. Yep. All right. All right so, a word of advice, just an idea. So the clip in here that clamps this rod in place up in there uh, so that it doesn't fall out and you don't have to work on trying to finagle it back up in there. Um, I took that screwdriver, as you saw earlier, and held it up so that I could get my socket back on it and tighten it down. That way it's not falling off or falling out and it's still in place for whenever we go to put it back together. So, right. Next we will begin removing this. This is your water pump. I believe this is the water pump. We believe this right here is the water pump that pulls water up in there and cools your engine down. Yep. Let's hold that up here. Actually, I feel that a wrench would be better suited for this position. They're not tight. Gasket. You know, it's got a gasket, it's got a gasket. Now, luckily, this engine is new enough and it hasn't been ran that we can reuse the gaskets. Hopefully, but we'll see how it comes apart. Grease in 
Throw it on the ground. Why don't I have three bumps there? Because two of them roll away. Oh. Yep, yeah. ever so gently, gently. Now that's got rubber grommets. Be gentle. The pump is coming apart. That's fine. Don't let the bar fall out of that. Cute little pump. Alright. Uh, we're going to try to find something to pry this off. And we will be back. Ooh. I thought we had it to move or move. Yeah. I'm going to pop this. Alright, do it. <laughs> well, that's one way to do it. <sighs> What's our gear? <laughs> hey, the gear came out. That's what was holding us. Okay. Well, that is definitely one way to do it. Um. Uh, yeah. So it goes like. It this. Okay. Oh no, it goes like this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we didn't mean for it to <laughs> shoot out like that. Uh, it was pretty well held on there. The gaskets actually look pretty good. Um, does this gear just like slide up on me? Okay, it does. Alright, watch out. There's a washer on that? No, there's not. Okay. There's not. If it was, it would be done here. So basically, that's what that is. Um, we're going to set this to the side right now. If you attempt to do this, make sure that you are holding a hand over the top of that. We still have one more gear in there. That should, if you use this screwdriver, you can probably lift it and pull it out. I think it'll turn first. It does. It's it on does. a bearing. Okay. I'm unsure how that one comes out. Let me see. Voila! Yeah. Can you grab that? Is there a washer in there? There is not. There's not. It's not. It's not. It rides on no. the bear. Oh, it rides on the bear. Side. Okay. <clears throat> so as I showed earlier, this is how the old one and new one looks. This is the gear that comes out of there. And as you saw, just a good pop on the hand. And we have it all dismounted. Uh, so we're going to start putting it back together. So, I found me a bucket to sit on. <laughs> and first thing we're going to do, well, one thing I did in between stopping and starting again, uh, I put a little bit of oil on the bearing down in there because I believe in lubrication it will uh, probably save a little bit in the long run even if like that time between start up and the oil getting to it that gear just drops right down in there and uh, kind of sits it just slides into that bearing down in there and then next we're ready to set you have to hold your little gear up there because it'll have to go in at the same time yes it will so this little it's a i call it a pinning gear um it sits between this gear in here and the gear on the propeller shaft it also sits on the drive shaft it also the drive shaft actually goes into it. So, all right. Make sure you do it. 
So we're going to hold it in there and align it so that the drive shaft will connect with it. Okay. Once it splines, I right, spin it. Okay. Once it splines up on the drive shaft, it should also. Okay, hang on. I need to wiggle this down. All right, hold on, this is in. Once that's down. <coughs> yeah, it's free right there. Uh, once it is down, once the shaft is down, then the little pinning gear will set. Can you see it? We might get enough light in there. So, as you can see, the pinning gear is connect is on the drive shaft and is currently splined with that gear. So that way, whenever we put the propeller in there, everything will drive together. I think we're ready to put the propeller in. You want to slide it up in there? Mm-hmm. And this still has plenty of oil on it from disassembly. Well, actually, um, hold that thing a little more burning. So, we really don't want anything to slide apart. Sliding the bearing into the where it goes. It does oh, have okay. a little force on it. It does. Alright, so let me hold it. Let me hold it for a moment. Now that we're close. Oh, did it have pressure on it whenever it come loose? Yes. Okay. Once you hit there. Because we got that little centrifuge clutch in there. Now you're going to want to pull these down evenly. If you don't, it's going to go crooked in there and you could potentially crack either this housing or mess up. The uh, the collar that slides down in there, which would be very very bad. I have no idea how much that would cost. It would probably be cheaper to buy another motor. And the last thing we want to do is buy another motor. All right. I'll hold it if you want to uh, tighten them down. Hey, put the uh, socket. A short socket? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. See if this works. Without getting in the way. You're going to need a much taller extension. Right. Um, give it a quarter. I'm going to watch. Is that in this? Keep 
going. What do you mean slow it up? It's got looser. You're going faster than me. Just a note from experience. If you're turning one down and one side gets looser, uh, that means you're turning the other side too fast. You want an even amount of pressure as you go down. And he's going to put his personal fill right torque on it. It's a little bit of an experience level doing this because after you've messed with it so much and stripped so many, you know how far you can turn it before it comes apart. <laughs> I think that's good. I right, turn the shaft. Oh. Cool beans. All right. So we need to put the water pump back on this thing. Let me hold it. <clears throat> and there was a rubber grommet. Uh, if you do have to pull the water pump off, this rubber grommet goes in, back into this hole. And all you're gonna do is push it back in there. Right there. The short one goes in the front. And you never want to pull down a part with the bolts. If it will not, if it's not spring loaded, you want to make sure that it goes flush with your next, with the piece it's going on to. If it has a gap, take it off, find out what's stopping it, and retry. That one's still tight. It gets a little slow. Yeah, it was tight coming out. <clears throat> Now the housing for this water pump is plastic, so there's not going to be a lot of torque on it as you tighten it down. Yeah, 
Did you hit that one? You did not. Yes, I did. They didn't go fishing with this. Uh, you do them however you want to. <laughs> It doesn't help me anymore, it's just like against the plastic house. Alright, cool. <clears throat> Alright. So, here comes the part where we just slide it back in. <laughs> where we just slide it back in. Tighten it. Untighten it. Untighten, loosen. Same difference. Yeah, you mean. Sure this is alright. It better be. I felt like it pointed the other way. It shouldn't be on the bent part anyway. Um, okay. What? You're pushing me back up a little bit, please. You, you work this thing up onto that thing. And like. Okay. Here, we need to make sure. You should be able to let go. So as you're putting this foot back in, there's a metal hose that comes down and hits uh, the top part of the water pump that you have to line up. And also there's this uh, shaft in the front. I believe it actually, I uh, think it handles the clutch in here. But um, you got to make sure that's lined up. You need that pushed over or when I need that clutch to be strapped to Oh. Alright, so as he's working on putting that plastic, that rubber grommet back in, I'm just going to start our bolts on the bottom. I think I might need a short circuit since we need to shoot this off trailer on. Is it being a bugger? Yes, because 
It's not made to come out. <laughs> Are you sure? How did they put it in? They put it in before they put the shaft in. You're positive about that. Yes, sir. I mean, I know where he's at. I know how these things work. Well, I've dealt with them before. And it is a headache and a half. You ever try putting a light bulb in on a truck with the grommet on the light? It don't work that way. And it's in. I do my best. For some reason, it doesn't seem like it's where it needs to be. Alright, guys, so we got it all back together. Uh, I went ahead and put in the drain plug and everything else. We just got a few small pieces to put back on here. Also a note in behind this plug that rod that goes up that we here. tried so hard to line up. Um, that it is will the... take you some time to get it adjusted properly. Thankfully ours had a little mark on it where it was set at the factory. And we had to play around with how tight to make it so that it wouldn't slide on the shaft as you were trying to actuate forward and reverse and neutral with this thing. So keep in mind that you do not want to break it. You do not want to strip the bolt. So just play with it. See how tight it, if you tighten it down and it still moves, loosen it up, reset it and tighten it down just a hair more you probably will get frustrated as we did but be patient and just play with it treat it as a fun thing to do as opposed to actual work that always helps me to stay calm and it helps to keep us from breaking stuff so so when you're finished this right here should spin freely your propeller should spin freely I'm sorry you could have the shaft but other than that that is how you do the lower unit on a Hankai engine uh, this one's the 6 horsepower 2 strike I highly doubt there's too much of a difference between the other Henkai's or Mercury's or Tohatsu's. Uh, but I hope this helps you out and uh, we'll see you next time when I actually put this engine on my new dinghy out of the lake and we're going to get it through its break-in period and see how fast we can get her to go.